this keyframe CapCut mastering course, I will show you seven unstoppable ways on how to use keyframe in CapCut PC. From using colors, from changing zoom scales, from camera movement, scrolling text, scrolling credits, audio reduction and increase, object tracking, animations, pop-up, transition, and a lot more bonuses in this course. Video editing is changing and I am sure you don't want to be left behind with your videos no one wants to watch, right? Let's fix this in this course and I'm going to be showing you the very professional way of using keyframes to elevate your video and make your video stand out from the rest. Let's get straight right to it. So what is the work of keyframe? Keyframe is generally used in video editing to change the effect, the feel, the colors and so much of a particular subject video to give it a sense of professionalism and it can be added in most editing app and I'm going to be showing you this on CapCut and it's usually represented by a kind of diamond shape as you can see here as you can see it says add keyframe so in this class i just defined keyframe now i'm going to show you how to add and delete keyframe this is one of the very most important parts you need to understand adding it and deleting it so to add a keyframe for instance one add a keyframe to the beginning of this clip i'll just come I can either do two things, I can either click a personal keyframes, either scale, position, rotation, or blend, which is just down beneath, blend. But I like to click on transform, which will affect any which one we decide to choose. Okay, so now that I have it all put on, as you can see, going down is only for blend, it's not turned on, and that is for a reason, blend affects the video movement opacity colors and rest so it gives you a private way of doing that but for this we just added one keyframe here and we can move our cursor to a part of the screen for instance this part and we can generally just add another keyframe okay so if we move we can add a keyframe by just increasing either we increase like this you can see if you look it created a keyframe here and also created a keyframe for skill right if we move down somewhere here again i will decide to move the position by maybe pressing down a left mouse click and just turning it one way or the other it automatically adds a keyframe here which is blue and it's white over here so I'll add one more and then i'll show you how to delete keyframe so for instance maybe we want to reduce it beyond what it is right now we can do that for instance we want to make it disappear on the screen as you can see it added a keyframe here and it added a keyframe here and now if we go to the beginning and play it this is what we get right so this is how it's looking and now you can see that quick disappearance from the screen and it's gone right so now to delete it, it's very simple. All we need to do is to hit on the keyframe, it turns blue, right click and we we'll delete. We hit on it, press, press it down, click delete, click, right click and delete. So now we have all those keyframes out. So all those effects we added, you can see it's all gone and we don't have it anymore. So that's how to delete and add keyframe now i'm going to show you how to change font colors using keyframe and you want to watch that to the end it's super interesting let's do that so how do we change keyframe for both videos and text when it comes to color is what i'm about to show you Please remember you would like to watch to the end because it's going to be super interesting. I would advise you watch to the end so that you don't miss out on any aspect of this. Please. So for colors, it's quite simple. We need to just come over to 
adjustment all right so now we're on adjustment and we can scroll down and you see you find you can adjust general for adjustment and you can adjust for singular images so what i will usually do like i did in the first video is to click on the general keyframe like that and then i will move my cursor to somewhere here and then i can reduce the saturation of this image like this and move it again and totally get the saturation out so we have a black and white and when i move down here again i can gently just take it back up and i can overdo it you see it's super red and then i can just bring it down this is for video i'm going to show you how to do it for text also okay so now we have it and if we play it this is how it's going to look so we have it fades to black as you can see and it's fades back check out as you can see the movement is giving us here because that is what we did so you see it's moving here the way it's changing here also so that's one way we can also make it slower or faster if you want to make your keyframe slower or faster and yes this is why i said you want to watch every part of it because you might just miss something i did not say in a previous part of this course and now i'm saying it so to make it slower or faster you can just re bring it closer to the first keyframe if you want to make it faster all right you might want to make the change faster so you just need to click on your keyframe and drag pressing down your left mouse click button and drag your keyframes together like the way i'm doing it now and it's going to give you a faster change to the colors of the video so we're just going to play it from the beginning watch out for two things watch how it scroll through the keyframe and also watch the way it moves from left to right yes so let's play it and see okay you see how fast it moves so that is it it's super easy and for text it's quite easy also let's bring in the text let's bring in default text here and i'm going to be using the default text all right so i'm going to be using the default text so we have the text there so we have it for instance we want it to appear from somewhere here okay want it to appear somewhere here and let me say like and share like and share so please like and share the video if you're enjoying it so far and now we have our text we can go to the beginning and create a keyframe on this remember we had let's get it to the beginning since we already have the color movement there and we have the first keyframe so we can go to colors as you can see for colors it has its own keyframe so click on color so we are starting with white once we move a bit to the front like that as you can see we've moved it you can use your shift key button and your right click right arrow button to move frame by frame and you can do that for both left click mouse button and the rest i hope you understand that and we can just come over to colors and just simply change colors okay so for instance we can change it to orange and we move a bit again watch as it adds the keyframe when i change the color especially when i move keyframes to the front so if we can go to color again and change it to a gray you can see it added another keyframe so we are going to move it again to the front like so and once we change the color it's going to change also so let's keep doing that as you can see so now i think we have the last one which was the super red uh, we can also change that to red right let's do the super red and we go find red like that and we have a final color which we can take back to white and so we we'll take it back to white just like that all right so we we'll take it back to white and now if we go play it from the beginning 
this is what we get watch this and also watch how the color changes here again so let's play it so you can see that's how we use keyframes for colors in video and on text yes so let's learn how to use it for scale we're going to be using it to zoom in and zoom out to create cool effects it's super easy to do not complicated and we can do it for ourselves i'm just going to show you how to do it now so for instance we have this clip and yes there are two types of zoom we have the slow zoom and we have the fast zoom so i'm going to be showing you how to do the two starting with the slow zoom so we have the clip again i'm just gonna hit the video now we'll click on transform all right so now we're just gonna start from the first keyframe which is the origin and we're just gonna move in like that because we're trying to do the low key slow zoom so now I'll increase the scale. Okay. So that's the slow zoom. Again, as you can see, you can see the gap I'm creating between keyframes. You can see the gaps I'm creating between keyframes. And I will do one more. And this is how it looks. Okay. So now if we go to plates from the beginning, it's going to look like this. As you can see, it is slow zoom and it's super slow, not really slow, but it's smooth and slow, not so fast. So we're just going to delete again, click on the keyframe, press delete on your keyboard. Just click on the keyframes and press delete. Now we are going to make fast zoom okay and for fast zoom most times you might just need two three keyframes because you just want to zoom in sharply and zoom out sharply so for this we're just going to move a bit like this and we have this something like this okay let's see so we can see their face closely like that and then we have another sharp one like that not far from this one and we take it back to the original clip so that's it first and now we have this so now if we go back and play it this is what we get see super fast zoom that's a super fast fast zoom so if you see it's too fast like i showed you you can always adjust it a bit move this somewhere here and move this also so now we just play it and this is what we get Okay, so that's it. As you can see, that is smoother but not so fast. But if you want it super fast, then we need to put them close together. So it just gives you that very fast movement like this. Good. So that's how to do the scaling with keyframe. Also, I'm going to be showing you some keyframe graph, which I think is important to know how to use, especially when it comes to movement. But that will be when we get to animations and object movement and pop up and the rest we have a long way to go but i hope this is educative and creative so far so for this i'm going to show you how to make camera movement artificial camera movement we can put it in that way so if you look at this clip i would play it and you can see she just in one side the camera is obviously just stationed in one side and she's moving from left to right so i'm going to show you now how to create that artificial camera movement to look like someone is behind the camera really moving the camera so let's do it so to start with for this one there's one thing i always do you can use your shapes or your circles or whatever but for me i'm just going to bring in a default text again so now i'm just gonna i want our face to always look like it's in the middle do you get so i'm just going to click on this text sorry i've not put that in so now we have the text there i'm just going to drag it for the length of the video i might not put the keyframe in for us so i don't make it super long 
So I'm just going to click on this and press down the dot. So now I have that single dot. I'm going to scale it up. Okay, just for the purpose of this video, we're going to get rid of the dot later. Okay, so the dot is there. So I always want our face to remain in this circle area. So now I'm going to go back to my first clip and I'm going to hit the transform. And for this, I would like to go frame by frame. So to do that, you're going to press your shift key button and your arrow right key button. So if I press it the first time, as you can see, our face have moved to this side. So I'm going to readjust uh, back into that place like that. Okay. So you can see it has created that extra. So we're just going to cover it like that. So I'm going to do my shift key again on my right click button and she has moved again. So I'm just going to move it like that. Covering the space. It's always important to cover the space because sometimes you might not have space in the footage. So you always want to fill up the lapses, fill up the lapses, like I said. So now we've done the second one. So we'll do remove again. All right. So we're going to move again. As you can see, our face have moved. So we just move the face like that. So we keep on doing that. I want to see serious movement away from the circle. We try to bring it back as close as possible. She moved again. So we'll try to bring her back to the middle. You do that for the length of the video. So now we are done. We don't need this shape again. So we can delete that. And now we'll go back. So we can do Ctrl Z. I just want you to see the shape in it. And now we'll play it from here. This is what happens. Just see it. Let's play it. Okay, so if you look at the background closely, now let me get this circle out of it and take it back. Now we'll take a closer look at the background and see the way it looks now. So you can see it looks like the camera is fully now. It's not complicated at all. These are simple processes, simple detail you can use and it will elevate your video editing. Let's keep going and let me show you one other cool trick. Have you ever wondered how scrolling credits are created? Yes, let me show you. So for this one, I'm going to be using default text again, and I'm going to be showing you why keyframe remains the king when it comes to video editing. So I'm going to control V to paste in what I want there. I'm going to reduce. Okay. I'm going to reduce the text like that. So as you can see, these are top 15 state in the U S yes, because I know most of my viewers are from the U S. I cherish my other viewers, but I'm just trying to show you what we can do with keyframes. So don't take anything personal. I love you all, no matter the countries you're coming from. But I'm just using the top 15 states in the US for this example. So as you can see, we're trying to create scrolling credit, right? So to start with, we're going to move it down, but I would advise you to do something. Click on this box. So we're just going to Reduce that a bit, yes, so that we can have space at the top and bottom. I'm going to be showing you why it is needed. All right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take this one completely out like so. Okay. So now. Okay. Transform. As you can see, we have transform. It can get complicated sometimes, but super easy once you know how to do it. So we're going to hit the transform. We just want the up positioning. So this is the first point. We created the first point as you can see. So now I'm just going to move to the end here. 
So depending on how slow or how fast you want it to move, that's when you're going to determine how much of space you're going to give. So for me, I'm just going to do that and I will take it out completely like that. Completely. Okay. Just like that. So now if I go to the beginning and I play it from the beginning like this. Okay, I want to get rid of that box so that you guys can see it clearly. I come to the beginning and I hit play. You see those rolly credits you see in movies? This is how it looks. This is how it's done using keyframe. So now I'm just going to hit play. And as you can see, boom, we have it. Let's play it again. So you see, it's super easy. It's not a complicated process. It's just super easy to do. If you want to make it slower, or faster you just click on this yes you have to adjust this you have to make it longer for instance we we'll make it this long and we move this keyframe press on your left mark click and just drag your keyframe to the end All right so now it's going to move super slow slower than what we had before okay so now let's play it and you see how slow it moves as you can see it's slower than what it was looking before, not that fast. So that's how to make it super fast, super slow. That's why I say every part of this course is interesting and is educative and you should not miss any part of it because you're going to gain a lot. And I'm going to show you how to do scrolling text that goes from right to left. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So just stay with me. So to do the scrolling text, the same process, let's get rid of this. So delete that. We just delete this one okay we'll delete it so now we'll bring in default text again and now i'm just going to put in what it's going to say okay so you see we have it like that once again i'll reduce the reduce the font so the size and you just have it like this reduce it as much as you can Okay, so that is not too big, but as you can see, this is our text. So text, you want to ensure you have it like that. So now once again, you go down to transform, making sure. So we have transform here, making sure your text is at the beginning where you want it to be. As you can see, like I said, you can see it's big, so we'll reduce this scale so that we can see it clearly. Okay, that is where it is. So that is where we want to put our first scale. As you can see, it appears here. And then we want to move it to the end. And then we want to also drag this to the end like that. Okay, make sure it's on a straight line. So you always ensure it's on a straight line like you see. If you want to do that, so it's saying like, share, and subscribe. If you've not done that already, please ensure you like, share, and subscribe while I educate you and pass knowledge on to you. I'm sure this course is helpful so far. Please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so now we are at the end, and that is it done. So we can come to the beginning again. Okay, you can come to the beginning and play it, and this is how it's going to look. Okay, you can see it's super fast. I'm sure you were unable to read anything from it. So drag it out as much as possible, as long as it remains super low, readable. Okay, I know I'm showing you how to do this because you might experience this and you just need to drag it out before you export it because if you don't do that, it might be hard uh, to adjust it post okay so you do it at the beginning so now let's go back to the beginning and let's play it okay so you're gonna see it's super slow not super slow but better now as you can see spread the word by hitting that like subscribe and share button let's make the world a brighter place together one click at a time Super easy, not complicated at all, and we are done with how to use keyframe on CapCut 
for scrolling text and scrolling credit. So in this part, I'm going to show you how to use keyframe to adjust volume of a clip or an audio seamlessly, super easy. It's not even complicated at all. So let's say, for instance, we want this volume to start super slow. All right, we want to get into the volume super slow. So let's assume this is it. Let's give it a little bit of volume. Let's split and you hear for yourself now. Okay, so that's the beginning. So we'll take it to the beginning. If, for instance, if we want it to start slow in the beginning, we're going to create our first keyframe. As you can see, keyframe for audio there. Volume. All right. And now we are just going to move it to where we want the volume to start increasing. For instance, here. And then we just reduce this. The more you drag it here, the higher the volume gets. So we are just going to do that. Okay. So it creates that keyframe. It creates it here also. As you can see, the line now has changed. You can see it's more like a curved line. So now we can move it to somewhere here again and increase the volume more. Okay. As you can see. And now we can take it forward again and bring the volume back down. All right, it just creates that curve. So depending on, on the effect you're trying to get, let's do it again one more time. And now let's take it back up. As you can see, the more we add these bars, the more it gives us the keyframe. And looking at the graph carefully, you can see it has that curve to the top. So this is the IS part. It comes down again and it starts to go up again. Now, if we go back and play, this is what we'll get. So I will try to make one part where the volume completely dies off. Let me make it this part, right? Where the volume completely dies off like that. And then one part so that you can actually see the effect work out perfectly. Where the volume starts to come back again. Like that. And then. In. Again. And then completely dies off at this point slowly but surely all right so we'll just play the old clip so that you guys get a feel of it all right so perfect so now let's go from the beginning and just listen to it carefully and see the power of keyframe on audios in CapCut pc and let's play it So this is the part you might want to say something then if volume starts to come up again as we stop talking okay so you can see it's super easy man guys it's super easy it's not complicated once you know to do these things your videos just keep standing out over and over again let's go on let's go on let's move object let's create animations with this it's super fun i love keyframes and i've been waiting to create this course for the longest of time and i'm glad i'm creating it now please watch to the end let this video have a good retention come on guys you guys are trying to learn something please watch to the end it's advisable this is one of my favorite parts yes because i would say when you put a nation into your videos, it gives you that extra edge over a lot of people who can do it or who don't put in the time to do it. So for this one, I'm going to be showing some movements on the map. As you can see, we have the map of the world actually here, right? So we have the map as we can see it. So now I want to make this direction or location icon move on the map also the plane i want to make that move on the map so i'll first bring in 
the location icon i'll put that on top like that all right so i'll just adjust it you know, like this and reduce it okay a bit like that so if you don't know i'm from africa yes and i'm proud so we have the icon there and let's assume i was in i think it's south america right geography student let me know down in the comment if i got this right and i want to make that swift movement to africa and then to united states united states should be somewhere here the uk is here right you get the point so i'm just gonna put in the transform keyframe and the first point and then i'm gonna cross over like that okay no i'm supposed to it's supposed to be here right that's the first one and then you see this is why i like to show you everything i do we make this mistake sometimes putting the first keyframe i'm not moving it so i want to move it from here to somewhere here or oh, i want it to quickly move right so i can move it there and just drop it back here okay so now if i play it this is what it looks like all right this is what it looks like see moving straight line just like that all right so it's it's moving quite slow you can make it move faster by just dragging the keyframe closer to each other and you have something like this you have something like this if i play it you have something like that okay so now this is where i will introduce you to what they call keyframe graph but before i bring in keyframe graph i also want to take a plane from the us so i'm just going to bring in a plane put it on top like that once again i will adjust this and i'll reduce this also so i want the plane to fly from it's quite big right okay so we'll reduce the plane so i want the plane to fly from i don't know where this is on the map i'm not a geography student i know the us or the uk somewhere here and europe generally but I don't know but i just want to get this plane moving from this point okay moving from this point on the map but let me just take it so we're close to where the, we have this water and i want it coming to nigeria okay but again i'm gonna go to the beginning right so i'm gonna go to the beginning okay and now i want to also do the position keyframe so i'm just gonna before i hit keyframe in any of this section i want to adjust the plane the way i want it to start i want it to look like it's flying okay so i want to look make it look like it's flying actually so this is me rotating it i'll rotate it so it's going to be based on rotation so i want to make it look like it's flying like so and yeah right so now this is where I put the transform keyframe on all. Move my cursor. And now I want to move the plane also. So it looks like it's flying and when it starts to approach. Okay. When it starts to approach. I will now try to make it reduce it. Like I'm a proper pilot. Yeah. Proper pilot moving in. So just try to move it, as you can see, move it as I get closer to Africa. I will just reduce rotation again and move in on Nigeria gently like that. And I will do that again, reduce rotation because we are getting to Nigeria and it's about time we land okay so let's 
Now when I need to take a landing space just on Nigeria. Okay, so boom. We are in Nigeria now. So now if I go over and play it from the beginning like I always do for you guys so that you guys understand it, this is how it looks. Bam. So you can see how easy it is, not complicated. You can also make it smoother. If you want the plane takeoff and landing to be longer, you can always just increase your keyframing. Okay. If you want the animation to take longer time, you can just do this and it's going to take longer time to move. And we are going to have something cool. So I'm just going to show you how to use keyframe graph to make it smoother. Okay, for instance, we can just right click on this keyframe, no, not delete. We want to right click on this full at the plane element. So you see where it says shows keyframe animation. Okay, so now we have a new dialog open for us and we can go over and see where we need to add in either the direction or you can see usually we need keyframe grab when we are doing speed ramp or any other thing but for scale and the rest most times you can just use this is the scale as you can see auto curve you can use auto curve at the end here for y axis we can also use auto curve so it just gives that smooth just gives that smooth landing right for rotation to rotation you can just give it that smooth landing also so now if we close this graph okay hide it and go back to the beginning and play it okay this is what we get just watch how smooth it is so you can see so we have that smooth landing that is how to do a nation using keep frame in CapCut PC. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm trying to educate you guys as much as possible and I hope I'm doing just that. Let's go on and I'm going to show you how to do pop-ups in CapCut PC using transitions and keyframe. Let's do that. So let me show you how to make pop-ups in CapCut PC using keyframe. So I'm going to be bringing in two clips. For instance, let me use um, the dancing girl. Should I write? Should I use the dancing lady? So if we have the dancing lady. She's dancing right about now. Okay. And I want this to pop up next. After a while of our dancing, let's say somewhere here. Okay. So I want that to pop up there. So what I will do in this scenario is, first I need to reduce this, right? Because it's more like an up next or something like that. For instance, maybe you have, you've created a video and you want to show them the next video coming up. You can just do that. So now this is going to be our starting point. And I will put my transform keyframe again. And then I will just move it in. You can make it move super slow, so not so fast. You can just take it time to move in. And let's bring it up. Okay. A little bit like that. Okay. So it popped up. Right, so if we play it, this is where it's going to look, and this is where we need the smooth A's in and out. Okay, so let's play it. Okay, so you see it's in, then after a while, somewhere here, uh, we're going to take it back down. All right, so let's take it back down. Once again, I'm going to show you how to use keyframe graph. So let's right click, show keyframe graph. So for this one, the pop up, right? 
So I want to show you how to use that to Y axis. You can just make the curve smooth. Okay. You can just make the curve smooth for this one. Let's make it smooth. And let's make this smooth also. Auto curve. So we're just gonna select auto curve for this. Oh, sorry, auto curve for this. Don't think we have a scale, we just have the X and Y axis, right? So let's move down to the X uh Y axis, sorry. So now for this we just put the smooth curve there. It's not showing, not showed it. Hey, so now you can just see the graph, it shows graph. So we'll click on that graph. So we have plenty to click on. Since we're working with the Y, actually not the X is the left movement. That was the mistake I made. Sorry about that. The Y is the up and down movement. So this is the up, right? So we want to do smooth in. We can use any of this in, but we want to use this one. Okay, so we have that smooth in. Okay, and for this, we want to have the smooth mm -hmm. out also. Okay, so we have that already. We'll close that, then we'll do for the smooth out. So click on that graph. So we want to do smooth out three. Again, I'm just going to use that so you can see how smooth it moves out of the frame. So now we are done with that, we'll close it, hide keyframe graph, and we can just put this close, okay, like that. So now if we play it from beginning, this I look, I'm going to show you how to add the open up stairs to it, just to have an extra easy. Okay, so this is how it is, and it's moving out, but it's too fast, so we'll just adjust that, okay, to somewhere here. Yeah. And we'll play it so we have it like that slowly moving in and out okay so we can move it in and leave it in it's up to you what you want to do and for this part okay let me delete this one and delete this one again so I'm just going to Okay, from here, I'm just going to bring it in, like so, and then let it go out here, right? Okay, so now for me here, I'm going to add, just somewhere here, I'm going to add my text, and it's going to say up next or something like that, or the movement, I'm just using the movement the way it is. Let's assume that's a tie to. Let's assume that's a tie to. So I'm just going to add it here. Okay. So the movement. So we have the movement. And I want it. I want it to appear. Just there. So I don't want it to be too big. Okay. Okay, so let's assume this is the name, the movement. Just reduce the scale. We're just assuming this is a text we want to use. So as you can see, so now we can add animation to the text. Yeah. We can add an in animation. Okay, so let's add this particular one. So now we add a particular one, and if we leave all to play, this is going to look the movement right. So it's going to look like that. So if you feel the text is moving out too slow, then you can just adjust the keyframe once more and it will work out. But for this, I can just stop it here. I make it this small so once it starts to go out it goes out with it like this the movement 
and is out. So it's as simple as that, not complicated at all, super easy. That's how to do pop-up with CapCut PC using keyframes. I hope you enjoyed it. So we are getting towards the end and I hope you're enjoying it so far. If you do, drop down your comments, let's relate. I want to know you guys better. I want to know you guys better and work with you guys, you know, relate, create a community. Drop me a comment. I would reply you. I'll reply as much as I can. And since it's early days, I'm sure I'll reply as Plentiful as I can, if there's a word like that. So for this one, we're going to be going into transitions using keyframe. Okay. So for this one, let's assume we have this first clip. Okay. This is the first clip. The two love beds enjoying their candy, and we'll bring in this love bed 2.0. Okay. So we have love bed 2.0. Let me just cut that to make sure the clips are same length. I don't want to make it too long for you guys. So just do control B and get the extras out. Okay. So this is the cool part of it. We are not doing anything to this first clip. The only adjustment we are doing is to the second clip. And we want it to start at this point. Okay. No, at this point it's going to be totally out so we'll go to blend this is where the magic happens you know click on blend and we're going to reduce the opacity down to zero or almost zero let's say zero and as we move in the clip we'll try to increase the opacity a bit like that just trying to show that there's something going on. Getting ready for the big on view. Reduce it again. Okay. Reduce it again. We'll try to bring it back up one more time. We reduce it again. And then we'll bring it in completely now. Just away here. And we are light overtake the top footage. We are the celebrates, okay? So now if I go from beginning and play it, we get something like this. We get this cool feeling. This is what you get, watch the video. So we get, let me click on this so that you can see the transition up on, on the blend for yourself. You watch this, so let's play. Okay, you can see it's moving and it's also trying to change it here. You can see a cool transition trying to happen. I don't know why the error was happening in the beginning, but you get the gist. So you see it reducing and then it's going to go full scale to where the celebrates. So that is how to do transition using keyframe on CapCut PC. I hope this was fun and I hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. dancing lady again and this time I want a text to move with her and all right so I'll bring default text again so this one is gonna say like and share uh, let's make everything capital letter like and share Okay, ensure you like and share if you're enjoying this course so far. And I will go to font. I'll just change the font for this one to this particular font. And I'm going to reduce uh, head movement is better since it's not going to go out completely. So now this is the magic. This is what's going to happen. Every time I move a keyframe, depending on our head direction, that's where we want to track the text to. So let's do the shift key and your right arrow. Okay, it's moved back. So we'll move the text like so. We'll do it again. Moves back again. We'll do the text to move back again. Like that. If she comes forward, we move forward. Just like that. 
you are giving at the close marking with the like, share, and subscribe. Okay, so if you're enjoying this course so far, please like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe, let's hit 70k views on this video. Oh, sorry, let's hit a million views on this video and let's hit 70k subscribers on the channel. And let's dance together. I appreciate you guys. My aim for the end of the year is 70k subscribers. And you guys, I know, would help me achieve that as I give you these courses for free. And I just try to make you better editors, share it with family, share it with loved ones. And let's grow together, right? I'm sure you want me to grow. And if you're seeing the donation super thanks button and you want to support me, feel free to do that. I'm grateful to get me some extra things to elevate the editing, like a better system for editing, better camera. I'm sure you guys want to see my face at some point and I'll do a face reveal when I have a better camera or maybe when I get to 10k or 15k let me know at what level you want me to do the face reveal yeah so let's keep going with this this is almost the end and it's super easy you might see it as complicated when you get used to it it becomes super interesting super sweet to do and you just keep smiling when you do it. And when people watch your video, they say, how do you do this? How did you do that? Once they start to ask you such question, you start to know you're getting to pro level in editing. And you're becoming better at what you do. Okay. So let's just get to the end of this. And once I'm done, I play it for you. And you see it. And that will be the end of this mastering keyframe on cap cuts pc so we are almost done and you can see for yourself this is tracking using keyframe to track so this is me tracking so now we have it let's go to the beginning and play all and let's see how it feels so let's play it and watch the like and share and as you watch the like and share make sure you also like this video and share this video and drop me a comment with your name and country i would like to know i would like to know you better let's go let's play it so you can see how the like and share is moving just with her there that's how to do it with keyframe on CapCut PC. Thanks for watching this course to the very end. I really appreciate you. See you on the next one. Stay blessed.